Hi everyone, I'm Shaylin here with Readsy. Today we're going to be talking about how to self-publish a children's book. If you've decided that self-publishing is the best option for your children's book, there are a few specific things that you need to know that might differ from self-publishing a book for adults versus for the children's market. So in this video, we're specifically going to look at self-publishing a children's book and the specific things that you need to consider when writing for the children's market. Step number one, understand the advantages, disadvantages, and process of self-publishing. Now, the main advantages of self-publishing a book are that you have complete creative and artistic control. You aren't limited to industry standards. For example, it's an industry standard that picture books are 32 pages. As a self-published author, you don't have to adhere to these conventions. You can also publish quickly and on your own schedule, and you don't need to rely on industry gatekeepers to offer you a book deal, which might be especially appealing if you're writing in a genre that's more difficult to sell in the current market. Children's categories like young adults can be fairly volatile in terms of trends, with popular trends spiking and then dropping off completely within a span of a couple of years, which means that for certain genres or subgenres, it can be very hard to publish them at specific moments, which might make self-publishing the most viable option if you are writing in what is currently considered a dead genre. What about the disadvantages? The main one is that you have to foot the bill for the book's entire design, editing, and production, including the printing, distribution, and marketing costs. You also have to put in the work to organize the entire publication process yourself and find and organize industry professionals that you want to work with. And the other main disadvantage is that you don't have a publisher's built-in reach. Publishing houses are huge businesses that have tons of reach and connections. You don't have any of that, so you have to find ways of marketing your book on your own limited reach. The fact that children's books are shorter than books written for adults doesn't necessarily mean that they're cheaper to produce. Although the editing costs may be lower, illustration costs can really add up. Illustrations alone for a picture book can cost between $2,000 and $10,000, depending on the illustrator that you work with. And editing costs vary significantly. With For something like a picture book, they may be fairly low because the word count is so short. Whereas for something like YA, where the word count is comparable to a typical adult novel, where the word counts are much higher, you'll probably have a similar editing cost to a standard adult book sitting around the same word count. Step two, identify your target audience for young readers. You ideally want to do this before you write since children's books categories are very specific. The five main categories are picture books for children zero to six years old and are usually less than 1,000 words, early readers for children six to seven and are usually between two and 5,000 words, chapter books for kids age seven to nine and are between five and 10,000 words, middle grade for readers nine to 12 and range between 30 and 50,000 words, and young adult for readers 15 to 18, with word counts between 50 and 100,000 words. Look at recent titles in your niche and see what's currently popular. What kinds of stories and topics are currently selling? It's also really important to know which writing style is suited to your age category. The difficulty level in writing style varies a lot throughout children's books, so it's really important that you're writing at the correct level and in the correct style for your specific category. Trends shouldn't fully dictate your work, but they do indicate what kids are currently interested in reading and also what parents and educators are currently buying. So it is important to be aware of them. Step three is to edit the manuscript. There are several types of editing, but at this stage, you're probably most concerned with developmental and copy editing. Ask yourself questions like, do you have a clear story that will engage a young reader? Are the characters memorable with distinct voices? And is the language too simple or too complex for the target audience? Revising on your own first is key, but once you've done as much work as you can on the book, it's time to get an outside perspective. You want to work with a professional editor. Since word counts will typically be lower, than for, books, than for adult books, you can expect more manageable editing costs. It's important for all self-published authors to work with a professional editor, but especially important in children's categories because the markets and age category requirements are so specific. So you wanna make sure you're working with a professional who knows the age category very well and make sure your book fits neatly into its intended age category. You can also find beta readers to help get you an outside perspective. Ideally, you want a combination of both adults and children in your intended age category to read the book. If you have kids or any of your family members have kids or your family friends with kids who are the correct age category for your book, see if you can get them to read it and get their opinion. They'll likely be very honest with you. And it's really important to see how enjoyable your book is for kids who actually are this age. This can be very hard to assess from your own adult perspective and kids will usually be pretty honest about these things. Step number four, hire an illustrator. Not all children's books have illustrations, 
Most YA isn't illustrated and lots of middle grade isn't or only has minimal illustrations, but the younger the age category is, the more likely illustrations play a key role. However, every book is going to need a strong cover, so you're going to need some kind of illustration or design work, no matter the age category. If you are wanting to work with an illustrator to illustrate a picture book, we do have an entire video on the topic, so I'll leave a link to that for you to check out. Step five, format the illustrations to fit the story. If you do have a lot of illustrative work in your book, it's really important to format the book correctly so there's a natural flow between the story and the images. Formatting for a middle grade or a young adult book that doesn't have any illustrations is going to be much easier and you can probably do that formatting work on your own unless you want something really fancy. But if you're formatting a book with a lot of illustrations, you'll probably need to hire a professional formatter since the formatting can get quite complex, especially for a picture book. But if you're formatting a book with a lot of illustrative work, you'll need to hire a professional interior designer to handle that for you, especially for a picture book where managing the story and illustrations can get quite complex. Step six is to look at your distribution options. Now it's time to figure out how you're going to share and distribute your book. Do you want print or ebook, print on demand or bulk? Which printing company and distribution channels are you going to use? First, let's look at the ebook versus print question. Ebook gives you the chance to reach a wider audience at a lower cost, makes your books easier to buy, and makes your books easier to interact with. However, it also means a lot more screen time for young kids, which some parents may be wary of. And young kids likely don't have their own e-reader or device that they can read ebooks off of anyways. Studies also show that ebooks are more distracting for young kids, especially if they're reading on a device that has other apps or games on it, and that kids retain information better when reading from a print book. However, some titles are very well suited to ebooks. Language learning books that schools use to help teach kids vocabulary are much easier to store and access as an ebook. And YA novels for older teens can also work well as ebook formats because kids of that age are much more likely to have an e-reader or device that they can read ebooks off of. Unlike young kids who aren't really going to be in control of their own electronic devices, older teens have access to these kinds of things, and many of them might even prefer ebooks to print books. And many kids this age read a lot of digital books. If there's a demand for your specific book in both print and ebook, you can distribute your book in both formats. Now, what about print on demand or offset printing? The pros of print on demand, which is where one book is printed each time it's ordered, is that it's a lower cost on the outset, there's no paper waste, there's no storage issues, and it's a lot faster. The cons of print on demand are lower image quality, which might be a big factor if you have a lot of illustrations, and limited customization options for things like trim size, paper quality, and cover type. Now, the pros of offset printing, where you order a large batch of books all at once, that it's a lower average cost over time, you can have higher quality images, you'll have stock available for live events, and a higher chance of being sold at brick and mortar bookstores. The cons of offset printing are that it can be really expensive to order the proof copies. You usually need to order at least 500 copies, so if you don't think you can sell 500 copies, it may not be a good option. And as a result, the reprints can be very expensive if there's a fault. Most authors use Amazon KDP to print and distribute their books since it is the easiest way to print on demand and access a large audience. We have a couple different videos on navigating KDP, so I'll leave links to those in the description. But there are other distribution options and print on demand services out there that you can check out and it is good to know and survey your options. So I'll leave a few other resources below that you can check out to help familiarize you with the different print-on-demand options out there. And finally, step seven is to get book reviews to increase sales. Marketing is an integral part of self-publishing. If you've put in all this work and you make it to this point to not market your book, well, you've kind of put in all this work for no one to really be exposed to it or buy it. As a children's author, you want to boost your book's exposure while also creating a friendly face behind your stories, since that's how you'll connect with both parents and young readers. Here are a couple strategies. First of all, get your book into libraries. A ton of families make use of libraries, and parents trust libraries to endorse valuable titles. You can also try doing a tour at schools, in person or most likely virtually. This way you can go direct to your readers and I can tell you that as a kid anytime we had an author visit it was the most exciting day of my life. So kids love that stuff and it's a great way to connect directly to with your readers. And finally get positive early reviews. Reviews are such an important aspect of marketing your book and good reviews don't just mean having a bunch of five-star reviews on Goodreads or Amazon but also comments from reputable blogs, sites, or newspapers promoting and endorsing your book. There's a lot more to say about getting book reviews so we've got posts and videos on that topic 
topic that I will leave a link to so you can check out some further resources on how to get book reviews since there's a lot to know there. So that is how to self-publish a children's book. If you're currently writing a children's book, I would love to know which age category you're writing in. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any new videos from us. We've got new writing, editing, and publishing tips every Tuesday and Friday. Until next time, bye. Thank you.